We are joined now by Wisconsin Republican Governor Scott Walker, who is out with a new book, Unintimidated, A Governor's Story and a Nation's Challenge. As always, Governor Walker, welcome back. Uh, can I just get a quick take? Um, I really don't want to do this, but I got to do this. There's supposedly some new information out uh, regarding Governor Chris Christie. One of his disenchanted aides says he's got a letter that has more evidence. None of it's disproven. You have a thought on that? Well, as I've said in the past, I talked to Chris the, the day he spoke for nearly two hours in front of the media. He told me the same thing in private that he told uh, the public at that press conference. I have every reason to believe him, and assuming that information remains, uh, I would continue to believe uh, he's telling the truth. In terms of this new information today, I don't know enough uh, to know about it. I don't think any of us will for quite some time. You think he should remain as head of the um, National Republican Governor Association? Again, I think the information he told me, as long as that continues to remain accurate, which I have every reason to believe it is, uh, I have uh, confidence in him, just like I've had confidence in previous leaders, uh, Bobby Jindal and others, and, and those going forward. But, uh, I, again, a lot's happening in, in the last few hours. We'll look at it closely, but I don't see any reason to believe that that contradicts uh, anything that we've heard uh, from him thus far. All right, thanks. Um, I'm more interested in this. You recently told uh, an interview that the National Republican Party has become the party of austerity and Dr. No, not the party of reform and economic growth. Could you expand on that message? Yeah, it's something I talk about, as you know, Larry, in my book, Unintimidated. It's something I've been preaching for the last three years, and that is we shouldn't be at the party of austerity. We should be the party of reform. Here in Wisconsin, if we had just been about austerity, we would have come in and cut things across the board. That would have meant that things that we value would have been cut as much as things that needed to be pushed to the side. Instead, we put in place long-term structural reforms, and as difficult as they were a few years ago, they paid off. As you mentioned, nearly a billion dollars in surplus, an unemployment rate that's three points lower than it was four years ago at this time, 100,000 private sector jobs after having lost 133,000 uh, jobs in the four years before I took office, a net uh, 13,000 new businesses in the state after losing 27,000 businesses in that term before I took office. Good things are happening in the state, but it's because of pro-growth, pro-opportunity, pro-prosperity issues, uh, not because of austerity. We're making things work better, and I think that's a message. You know, Larry, you and I have talked about it, that President Reagan uh, inspired a nation to, to lead on, and one that we should be doing, not only in my state and other states, but across the country. No, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think you're exactly right. You know, we've had some better news on the economy, but the reality is this so-called recovery is only half as fast as it should be. And only 58 percent, this is an amazing statistic, only 58 percent of eligible workers are working. 58 percent, barely half the labor force. Now, I guess what I want to know is, given your great success in Wisconsin, I want to talk about the tax cuts in a minute. What would you do? You were President Walker. What would you do? Where would you start to rebuild the American economy and get that growth message implemented? Well, I think any leader, uh, if advising the next president or anybody else out there, I'd tell them do a couple of big, bold things. Slash the marginal tax rate, put more money back in the hands of Americans. We saw it in August of 1981 when the president, at that time, President Reagan signed the Economic Recovery Act out at the ranch uh, in California. Uh, after that, uh, after it was fully enacted, uh, shortly thereafter, we saw some of the most unprecedented economic growth that we've seen, at least in my lifetime. I think we could see it again. We, we need to get down... So we're not one of the highest taxed countries, uh, at least in the civilized wo uh, world. And we've seen it, and you're going to talk about it in a second. I'm sure you're going to ask me about it, but we've seen it at the state level. It works. You put more money back in the people's hands, they put it right back in the economy. Slash the marginal tax rate, repeal Obamacare, put it, uh, replace it with something that's a patient-centered plan that's not restrictive to the state nor to the federal government. Uh, put the patients back in charge, let people have the certainty of knowing where they're headed, rein in the EPA, one of the, uh, the worst barriers to economic growth and prosperity. It's exactly why Rick Perry was right before about Keystone. It would put America back on track. Heck, it would put a lot of my buddies, uh, operating engineers right here in Wisconsin, who would help build that at companies like Michael's company here in Wisconsin. And then I, I'd rein in other agencies like the National Labor Relations Board, mm. put the power back in the hands of the people. You know, um, it's really almost breathtaking. You're cutting taxes, as I understand it, by just about $2 billion in Wisconsin. Can you talk just a little bit more That's about right. that? That's a breathtaking number. Yeah, we, we came in and decided the best way to get our economy going in and help balance the budget was to put more tax relief, property taxes, individual income taxes, business taxes out there, all those things, a billion and a half thus far with our new 
blueprint for prosperity will put us over two billion dollars uh, since I've taken office. We're cutting property taxes, we're cutting income taxes, we're changing withholding tables so that people can get more money back into their their paycheck right away, starting just in the next couple months here through the end of the year. We understand that that surplus was generated by the good people of our state, putting more people back to work and work. More people are working, more employers are hiring, personal income is up. We want to keep it going, so we're going to plow that right back into that surplus, right back in the hands of the people and employers of our state. And All right, keep the ball side. rolling forward. Sounds like supply side to it, me. Exactly. Let me ask you something else. It's a vexing question. I want to go back to the national scene. As you know, um, some reformers in the GOP, like Paul Ryan and others, are trying to craft an immigration reform bill All right, for a variety of reasons. It's pro-growth. Uh, reach out to a uh, constituency that the GOP has done rather poorly with. And yet there's another faction, the restrictionist faction, that mm. everything you do, anything you do, they originally label it amnesty and sort of pound away on that. Governor, where do you come out on this? Is it time for immigration reform? Can that be done in an expeditious and, uh, and uh, good way? Or do you have to cowtail to the restrictionists in the GOP? No, I think one of the things that's been missing in this debate by just about anybody in Washington is a talk about fixing the legal immigration system. We're both a country of immigrants and a country of laws. We don't need to compromise one for the other. Uh, but the challenge here is we have a legal immigration system that doesn't work today, no matter where you're coming from, whether it's from Mexico or Canada or Germany or anywhere else around the world. And if we want to continue to be a nation that prospers, we need to have a legal way for people to come into this country, not just to deal with people who might be here right now without legal status, but for people who want to come in here, who want to live the American dream, who want to work hard just the way our ancestors and, and many generations back for some and recent, more recently for others came to this country, we need to have a way to inspire people to live the American dream legally. And that's something that's been missed, I think, in much of the debate up until now. As governors, we try to fix things up front before we deal with the aftermath. They're missing the ball in Washington right now. Well, I think this, this whole thing about amnesty, everything is amnesty. I mean, don't we want the brainiacs to come to America, you know, the H-1B visas? Don't we want smart college students that we're educating to stay in America? And don't we want to go through the process, Governor, of trying to legalize and give the right green card permits and eventually make citizenship for the 11 or 12 million who are here. I mean, really, isn't it about time the GOP just started down that path? I know every time they do, a certain group of people call it amnesty as though that is some viral disease. I don't get it, and I want to give you the last word on it. Well, and I talk about this in my book, The Shining City on the Hill was what President Reagan talked about. It wasn't just for people born here. It was about bringing people to this country, who want to inspire people who want to live the American dream, who want to add value to this country, just like so many generations have before it. That's precisely why we want a legal way to get in here, not just to become a citizen, but a legal way to come here and work in America. If you want to be a, a maker, not a taker, we want you in America. Uh, you know, I have to ask the last question. You're going to run for president? <laughs> I'm focused on being governor. It's the best job in America being governor. And I love the fact that people are talking about us in, in a favorable way because it means our reforms are working in Wisconsin. That's more important for the people in my state than it is for me. But, but as I've said, Larry, before, I, I don't think it's wise for anybody in our party or for that matter, anybody who loves this country to be talking about anything yet other than 2014. Because what we showed in Wisconsin, what other battleground states like Ohio and Michigan have shown is if you've got a team in place, not just a chief executive, but a legislative branch and an executive branch that are reform-minded right. and on the right track. There's no end to what you can do. We need to get a U.S. Senate back to match with guys like Paul Ryan in, in the House. Then we can elect a new president who can, who can have a team. All right. That profile could fit you, too. Therefore, I am going to conclude the door is open. Many thanks, Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker. As always, by the way, his new book, Unintimidated, it's available now everywhere.